So today, many people think of bighorn sheep as a rare animal, but what they don't realize is that they're once one of the most common species in the West. And uh, bighorn sheep populations we have now are just a shadow of what they once were, and we hope can be once again. Bighorn sheep were native to Hell's Canyon. They were uh, one of the most common ungulates in the area, more common than deer in many parts of Hell's Canyon. But uh, when the area was settled, the um, livestock brought diseases lethal to bighorn sheep. And so by 1935, bighorn sheep were extirpated from Hell's Canyon. They're completely gone. In the 1970s, um, Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife and Idaho Department of Fish and Wildlife started translocating sheep back into Hell's Canyon. Unfortunately, at that time, we didn't realize that domestic sheep carry diseases that are lethal to bighorn sheep. So now we understand more about disease in bighorn sheep and are more careful about where and how we move sheep. And we don't put them in areas where they're likely to come into contact with domestic sheep or goats. And the disease problem is, occurs both when bighorn sheep contact domestic sheep, but then following that, the disease can stay in the bighorn sheep population. So even um, if they're not contacting domestic sheep, at least for some period of time, uh, the population doesn't grow because of increased mortality, especially in lambs. And the problem is the mortality rates are so high, it's not uncommon to lose 90 to 100 percent of the lambs. So obviously a population can't persist with that kind of lamb mortality. So in order to get bighorn sheep in here at the potential that they could be, which is thousands and thousands of bighorn sheep, um, we need to solve the disease problem. In order to do that, Idaho Department of Fish and Game is working with other state agencies, federal land managers, wild sheep advocates, hunting organizations, and universities from Oregon, Washington, and South Dakota to restore bighorn sheep to Hell's Canyon and really west-wide. So today we're working in the uh, Soton Bighorn Sheep Herd in Southeast Washington. Uh, we're lucky that this herd is logistically easy for us to work in compared to most bighorn sheep herds. We have good road access and the sheep usually are in close proximity to where we can do ground darting in parts of the year to get repeated samples. Uh, today is a helicopter operation to get animals that we failed to capture earlier in the year during ground darting operations and to recapture specific individuals to put into a captive research herd. So what you want to do is take temperature when the sheep first comes in and then take another and see if it's what direction the temperature is going. Okay. So we have a, a large number of the female component of this population marked with radio collars. Uh, so one, we, we can recapture individuals. We can find the groups any time we need to find them for sampling or monitoring. Uh, so the helicopter has actually got a radio receiver in the helicopter. He is tracking down specific individuals and then capturing targeted animals within those groups. So he's able to find the individuals we're looking for, find groups of sheep, and then collect the sampled animals we, we desire through net gunning. So, copy that. Okay, I gotta go. <laughs> well, I, I just add that South Dakota is not immune to this issue. Uh, the, one of the goals of South Dakota Game Fish and Flowers is to increase the number of bighorn sheep in the Black Hills region of the state. Uh, at this time, they, over the past few years, uh, there have been disease issues with those herds as well. So the state of South Dakota is interested in the disease issue and trying to solve it and is uh, contributing to the captive project uh, at South Dakota State University to try to, as Francis mentioned, try to you know, crack this nut and uh, figure out how to deal with this uh, disease issue. The captive experiment allows us to take advantage of control conditions to test our ideas about clearing the disease from wild populations. In particular, the idea that disease is maintained by a small number of carrier individuals who are carrying infection. So some of the sheep we capture today we know from previous testing to be carriers and they're slated to go to uh, South Dakota State University to the captive study. Others we don't have any health information on and we want to determine whether they might potentially transmit bacteria. Hopefully they're clean. To find out, we're collecting nasal swabs and washes and throat swabs to look for evidence of infection and blood to test for exposure to specific pathogens by looking for antibodies. So Mel was doing the prevail? Yeah. Mel, did you get prevail? Yep. Okay. Okay. 
So we're really fortunate that Bighorn Sheep have a lot of support from the public. We have a great group of people who are working together on this problem. We've had some hurdles to overcome, but we've made progress and we think we're on the right track to, dis to solve the disease problem and so that once again, bighorn sheep populations can be healthy and as common as deer on the western landscape. I'd like to thank all the people and organizations that have supported uh, restoration of bighorn sheep in Hell's Canyon, and that includes the state wildlife agencies, the federal land management agencies, uh, Shikar Safari Club International, the Wild Sheep Foundation, um, and many individuals and other organizations that have made this all possible.